So as we talk about October surprises, uh, what is it that could hurt Donald Trump? In fact, let me give you an example here. Uh, I believe it was Bill Maher that was talking about this over the weekend. It's funny. I, I did the teases for today's show, and mm -hmm. I said, okay, we're going to talk about October surprises or the lack thereof. And if you heard the, the teases during any of our other programming, I said, it's the October surprise that wasn't. And then Bill Maher, Friday night, he probably was listening to me. To, to my teases. I'm sure he was. Put together his whole show around this. Smart guy. Uh, so he talked about the looming threat of an October surprise, and he said, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase here, he slept with an adult film star, attempted a coup, he steals from charities. If you're waiting for an October surprise to knock him out, dream on. There are better odds of another Joker musical. Hmm. Because the, the Joker... The second one bombed. Yeah, terrible. Uh, so... He went on to say, Trump said last week that really doing the purge, like in the movie, might be a good crime-fighting technique. He's the only candidate where the voters hope he doesn't keep his campaign promises. Joe, you had some, you had an opportunity to speak with some voters here over the weekend. And I was interested in their take when they see some of the, the campaign ads, the mudslinging. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris is going to give sex change operations to all the prisoners. Yes. Is there... Do the people watching that, is there credence to that? Do they think that's going to happen? Yeah, they, they do think that Kamala is actually going to do that. But, but do they think that Donald Trump is going to suspend the Constitution for a day and then bring in the purge? No, they do not think he's going to do that. Why? Why is it that they believe, they believe something outrageous when it's lobbed at her, but they don't believe the outrageous things that actually come from him? From him? I'll give credit to the people who test these ads and come up with them that they know the hot button issues that are going to set off voters on both sides. Yes, of course. The, the people yeah. who are in Kamala's camp and the people who are in Trump's camp. And for whatever reason, the sex changes with prisoners is a hot button issue that all of a sudden you find the people who are in Trump's camp, they seem to really believe that Kamala's going to let that happen. And and I talked with a few, and I said, D do you really think that's going to happen? And they, they weren't saying thousands of people would go out and get sex right, changes as right. they were in prison, but they said, oh, I wouldn't I wouldn't put that past her. She, she might do that. So here you've got one candidate that says, if I'm elected, I'm going to enact tariffs on everyone that, that uh, is exporting to us, mm -hmm. you know, countries where we're importing. Everyone's going to get a tariff which all economists, all Republicans, Mitch McConnell, everyone has said that'll hurt that's, your economy. That's going to that's going to jumpstart inflation again. That's going to be a bad deal. But on the other hand, Kamala Harris might offer sex change operations to people in prison. So, well, they'll push back and say though, but Trump's not really going to do that. He's talking tough. That's Trump talking tough. Oh. So, he knows how to the art of the deal. Come on. So what comes out of it then? That's that's always my the next logical follow up. If you don't think that Kamala Harris is going to follow through on the things that you claim she's going to, and you don't think Trump is going to follow through on the things that he claims he's going to, then what are we voting for? We're picking and choosing. Picking and choosing what between what we want to believe. That's wonderful. Do you think I'm wrong? No, the election really isn't about what the candidates. Are going to do it's because about I think what both we lie. believe they're going to. I Bo do too. Both lie. I do too, but it's it's really about what we want to believe that they might do. And both also dramatically overpromise, underdeliver too. Sure. With both the fantastical from you know sex changes for prisoners to the more realistic of we're going to investigate grocery stores and we're going to give twenty five thousand dollars to first time home buyers, right? Which are more practical programs and you can weigh the legitimacy of those mm -hmm. programs right. and is this a good idea or a bad right. idea but will they ever happen i don't know, I, don't know <laughs> I, I have no faith that they're going to follow through with anything they say they're going to do do you think because i have i have this notion that october surprises are only bad for kamala harris i, I want to stop you on that for okay. a second though because when we were getting ready for the show today you did raise one issue that i do think could hurt trump and I want to give you credit for it. Okay. Because you said that Trump could be hurt if. Mm -hmm. Is this the fryer thing? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just if he had a, a medical issue. Yeah, I think a medical issue is, is an October surprise 
that is not something that is like laid out. It's mm-hmm. not an attack by an opponent that that hits home. But I think, yeah, if there's a medical issue, if he has a stroke or something like that, obviously mm-hmm. that's going to hurt I mean, him. Obviously, if he passed away, that'd you know hurt <laughs> Harris or Trump. Sure, if, if either one of them had something like that. But I, if he did have a medical event, yeah, where he was shown to be physically or mentally diminished. Yeah. I think that would hurt him. See, and I, during rehearsal, this is why I asked about the fryer thing, because I I, I didn't want to use an inside Trump gag Trump over here. the weekend was at a McDonald's. Right. And making fun of, at least in part, the fact that Kamala Harris claims she worked at a McDonald's. Right. And Trump says... No, she didn't. Yeah, she didn't. And, well, he's going to go there for a day and actually get behind the, the counter and make some fries. So he worked at the McDonald's for 15 minutes. And what was a publicity stunt staged event for? I mean, his political stunt. Everybody ran with it. I'll give him credit. It seems like it didn't hurt him at all. But here's where I'm going to say this is what could have hurt if he'd have had a brain fart during that publicity stunt. A brain fart like what? Like uh, he's trying to put the fries in the fryer and one gets away, so he reaches into the fryer to grab it real quick. And he burns himself? And he burns himself. How would that hurt He would have looked like a giant nincompoop. Like this guy has no mental faculties, doesn't realize fryer hot, that burns himself. That wouldn't just himself. make him seem human? He burned himself just like I do at home once in a blue moon? Not if you reach into the fryer to grab the fry real quick. Hmm. And the other thing that could have made him look bad is, and I've worked, I worked, listen, there's no evidence of it. There's no evidence. You, I have no photographs. You are not going to tell me that you worked at the Golden Arches. Some people claim that I worked at the Golden Arches. Liar! Some people say that 1994, I worked at the at the Golden Arches. But you can't prove it. I don't have any physical evidence of it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the best we could do is try to pull some employment records from 30 years ago, oh, but I don't know I'm if they still have them. I'm going to trust you for this instance and believe you worked there. That floor was so slippery. Oh. And had he slipped and fallen and hurt himself. At the age of 78, that Entirely please, possible. How many times do people have slip and fall accidents? But even if he just slipped and fell and it was caught on camera, mm-hmm. his whole image is about strength. It's about this infallibility and if all of a sudden he is humanized then it ruins his demagogue stature you don't think let's say he falls over he didn't but right, let's say right, he right. did he doesn't come away from that and that mcdonald's i'm gonna sue them can you believe what oh, that they did been to the great. floor oh that would have been is a democrat run floor the democrats have controlled the grease <laughs> that no. would have been great harris got a little soap down there <laughs> caused trumpy to take a tumble yeah otherwise I, I think had Harris done something, we'd point at Harris and we'd go, can you believe that she did a McDonald's stunt? That's just desperate. Mm-hmm. Right? And I was thinking about... I'm a little surprised she hasn't tried to produce a picture or something. some sort of documentation to prove that she worked there. I, I do think that, I think it made Trump look good this weekend. I think it makes her look relatable that one in eight Americans worked at McDonald's at some point in their life. If you want to oh, I burned myself at McDonald's many times. You not reach? I never again, reached into the fryer. You're still claiming you worked there. We'll see about that. Well, some people claim that when I was working on the grill, I would occasionally set a knuckle on the grill because you had to tap. The, the burgers are frozen together. Pablo, did you ever work at one of these fast food places? So the the burger comes frozen together, kind of like if you buy a, a pack at at Fry's or Costco, mm-hmm. right? And they're very solid. So you would you would tilt them on their side and then bang them on the grill, right? And so as you, separate them to separate them, right? So on occasion, you would bang it on the grill and it would come loose, and then your knuckle would hit the grill, and then you'd have a burn on your knuckle for the rest of the day. And then you couldn't wait to grab more frozen patties out of the out of the freezer. To cool then you your could, hand you off could a little? put your knuckle on the frozen patties for a second. So I uh, hope you enjoyed your burgers in 1994. They had just a little bit of my burn pus on them. You're welcome. Oh, burn pus, Chris. Oh. Don't you feel like Trump's sins are kind of baked into his brand, though? Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. I I feel like there is no Trump without some of the law bending style that he that he exudes. And that's some of the machismo that people like about him, though. He he bucks the brand a little bit. He's, yeah, he's afraid to go against. Or he's not afraid to go against the system. But it's funny that it only works for him, mm-hmm. and it doesn't work for like Carrie Lake. No, you know, is she- that part of being female though? Too that if you're a woman, I do think you have a tougher road to climb in politics i think so too everything you do is second guessed examined and it's just i agree with that just tougher but i don't think that 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 that's necessarily true i think it's just i think trump has the it 
I don't know how, but he has it, and I don't think other people can get away with it. Thanks for watching the Chris and Joe Show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.